The main point of this class is to understand the pros and cons of sales forecasting. There is only one part in this class, sales forecasting, and before you like this video, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends about me, make sure you check the assessment objective for this class. Sales forecasting is all about predicting the future sales. This is a set of techniques, both quantitative and qualitative, that are aimed at predicting the future sales of a product, good or service. There are a lot of sales forecasting techniques, but the ones that we'll cover in IB Business Management syllabus are the following six techniques. Moving averages, variations, time series analysis, simple linear regression from toolkit, descriptive statistics from Toolkit, and market research from 4.4. In this class, I will only talk about the first three, because the remaining three sales forecasting techniques can be found in other classes, in Toolkit and in 4.4. Before we continue, one very important disclaimer. Calculations of moving averages and variations are not included in exams but you are expected to be able to interpret sales forecasting data. However, it is expected of you to perform sales forecasting techniques from the toolkit, see simple linear regression and descriptive statistics. So these three first sales forecasting techniques, moving averages, variations and time series analysis, I will tell you how to do them, how to perform them, how to calculate them, but you will not be asked to do that in the exam. You might ask, so why are we learning it then? Because if we don't learn it, you won't be able to understand how it works and you won't be able to interpret this data. So be patient and learn some new stuff about sales forecasting. Let's go. So moving averages. One thing that you can do is just record past data per year or per month or per week or per whatever time period and build a chart, build a line, build a trend. But this trend will look really jumpy. It'll be like this. So in order to smoothen the trend, whoever is in charge of sales forecasting is usually calculating three part moving averages or four part moving averages. Part can refer to either year or month or week or to whatever time period. You can say three year moving average, which means that that would be average of three years, or you can say three part moving average, that would mean the same thing. But what's important here is that the part does not have to be year. It can be three year moving average, three months moving average, three week moving average, three day moving average, or whatever. So the overall name is three part moving average. What part is, is completely up to you. So once again, why we calculate three part or four part moving averages to make sure that the trend doesn't look like this, doesn't look jumpy, that it's more smoother. This way it'll be easier to extrapolate the trend. Extrapolation is something that we learn in the toolkit and I will get back to you later, but basically it means prolonging the trend for the future based on past data. So the smoother the trend, the easier it would be to prolong it. If it looks like this, then it's unclear where it's going. That's it. Now let's see an example. Here you can see sales data in millions of rubles for 10 years. If we just use the past data for sales, then the chart is going to look like this. Look at the gray line. See, it looks pretty jumpy going up and down, up and down. But if we calculate three year moving average, then the trend would look much smoother. How to calculate three year moving average? We calculate averages of three years. First years one, two, three. Second years two, three, four third years three, four, five, and etc, etc. So here you can see all the moving averages in the third column. If we put these numbers on a chart, then we'll see this blue line here that looks much smoother than the gray line, which makes it easier to extrapolate the trend. You can see this dotted line here, this is extrapolation. We just continue the trend for the future, thus predicting the sales. That's it. This is how three-part moving average works. There's also four-part moving average. For four-part moving average, it's pretty much the same thing, but instead of three parts, 
years, days, months, whatever, you use four. In addition, there's one more step. You have to center the average. You also need to calculate the average of the moving average, but that's way beyond IB business management syllabus. If you're interested in moving the averages, just look up four part moving average. If you want me to explain that, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to record another video. But now I want to move on because three part moving average is enough for understanding this sales forecasting technique. The second sales forecasting technique is called variation. Variation is related to moving averages. It refers to the difference between actual past data and the trend or moving average, the blue line from the picture that I showed you before. Why do we calculate variations? Because if you know variations at different time periods, you will know when sales fluctuate mostly when they differ mostly from the trend. It can help you to predict future sales more accurately. You will know when demand is higher or lower. You will adjust your cash flow management or stock control accordingly. We will talk about this in more detail later at the end of this class, but overall we use variation because it basically helps with sales forecasting and marketing planning. Because it's good to know how different the actual sales are from the trend. Let's look at this picture. We are continuing the previous example. So we have 10 years, sales, three year moving averages and variation, which is the difference between sales and the trend or three year average. As we can see the highest variations are in years six and seven. So one thing that the managers might want to do is to dig deeper and find the reasons why years six and seven are so different from the trend so that they can predict future sales more accurately. Which brings us to the third sales forecasting technique that is related to analyzing all the reasons for variations and fluctuations. It's called time series analysis. Time series is basically a set of past data recorded at regular intervals. Past data for our purposes is of course sales data. And time series analysis is identifying the patterns and the fluctuations in the past data in order to have more accurate sales forecasting. There are three main kinds of fluctuations. Seasonal, cyclical and random. Seasonal fluctuations are caused by, surprise, surprise, seasons. Winter, spring, summer, autumn. For example, if we take ice cream, then apparently the highest fluctuation from the trend will be in the summer, when most people eat ice cream. Another example could be clothing. We can certainly say that the sales of warm clothing are higher in winter than in the summer. So that would be examples of seasonal fluctuations. Cyclical fluctuations are based on the stages of the economic cycle or the business cycle or the cycle of economic activity or the cycle of economic growth. There are plenty of names for it. It looks like this. I'm sure you heard about it before. All economies go through the same stages. Recovery, then it reaches the peak, then recession, then trough, and then again recovery, peak, recession, trough, recovery, etc. Overall, I think it applies to pretty much all the products. We might say that people spend more money during the growth, during the recovery, and people spend less during the recession when economy is heading towards the trough. And the last example of fluctuations is random fluctuations. These are basically unpredictable, not based on anything, not based on the cycle of economic activity, not based on seasons. For example, if for some reason people start buying ice cream in winter, then that would be a random fluctuation based on God knows what reason. In this picture, you can see fluctuations for ice cream sales. Seasonal fluctuations where in the summer ice cream sales go up. Cyclical fluctuations where ice cream sales pretty much overlap with the business cycle. And random fluctuations when for some reason ice cream sales increase in winter and spring. Once again, you are not expected to calculate moving averages and variations, but if you are provided with these data in the case study, then you are expected to be able to interpret it and use it to analyze the trends and patterns and make some conclusions and judgments based on this data. However, this does not apply to whatever is in Business Toolkit, 
This you are expected not only to understand and interpret, but also to calculate, perform, outline, etc. The two business tools from IB Business Management Toolkit that refer to sales forecasting are simple linear regression and descriptive statistics. Within each tool, there is a set of other tools, so those tools within simple linear regression and descriptive statistics that you should pay particular attention to are extrapolation, line of best fit, correlation, and averages, mean, mode, and median. Please find the corresponding class in the Business Management Toolkit. In addition to that, market research data is also used for sales forecasting. What is market research and how it works, we will learn later in Unit 4 in Class 4.4, Market Research. It's entirely about market research. So, watch 4.4 whenever you're ready to. Now, once we understand all the sales forecasting techniques and how they work, we are ready to finally talk about advantages and disadvantages of sales forecasting. On the one hand, sales forecasting assists marketing planning that we learned in 4.2. If you can predict some future sales, you can adjust your marketing mix accordingly. Marketing mix is something that we'll learn in 4.5, but for now it's just a set of decisions that a business has to make when selling a product. Decisions about product, price, promotion, place, and also for services, physical evidence, people and processes. So how to make these decisions, how to make the right decisions, this is something that sales forecasting can help with. In addition, it helps to maintain liquidity. Liquidity is something that we learned in 3.5. If you know when demand is high, you will make sure as a manager that you have enough cash to purchase raw materials and components to produce a lot of products in order to sustain, in order to meet the demand of your customers. If the sales are predicted to be low, then you don't need to hold that much cash because cash is a depreciating asset. Once again, what's liquidity? Learn in 3.5. In addition to control of cash and liquidity, it also helps with stock control. Stock refers to finished goods, components, raw materials that you keep in storage before you actually produce and sell your products. Again, if you know when demand is high, you will keep higher stocks to make sure you can easily meet the increase in demand. When demand is predicted to be low, you do not need to keep stocks high, because keeping stocks high is actually expensive. You need to pay the storage fees, you need to insure the stocks, etc, etc. So in order to make it really efficient, sales forecasting really helps with stock management. And lastly, sales forecasting is in a way planning. And as we learned many times in all units of IB business management, any kind of planning reduces risk because you're more prepared for the future. You have a plan B, plan C and etc. So this applies to sales forecasting as well. It reduces risk. Now the disadvantages of sales forecasting. Sales forecasting is a technique that is based on the assumption that future depends on the past. Because all sales forecasting techniques work on this principle. You take past data and you extrapolate the trend. Well, in many cases this might be true, but however it doesn't have to be this way. There are things that cannot be predicted and there are situations when past data doesn't matter at all. So, this is the major limitation of sales forecasting. It's based on past data that is used for future prediction that might not always be accurate. In addition to that, sales forecasting is just a forecasting. It's a prediction. It's about the future. So, in a way, it is a guessing game, which, of course, cannot be 100% accurate. Never. Additionally, sales forecasting is time-consuming and costly. It's quite easy to forecast sales for a small business, but think about a multinational company with millions of products, millions of customers, thousands of employees all over the world, different markets that are also hard to define, that would be a nightmare. So is it really worth doing it or not? Well, let me know what you think. And in addition to that, even though there's more and more technology and artificial intelligence in everything, including sales forecasting, it is still to a large extent done by human beings and human beings are subjects to human factor and human mistakes and most importantly to human bias. 
all managers would of course want to predict sales that are lower than they really think they are because this will put these managers in a good light. They will say, ooh, it was predicted that I'll sell for $10,000, but eventually it turned out to be 20. See, I'm a good manager, please give me a bonus. So sales forecasting is subject to bias and something that can be manipulated by unethical managers. That is the end of 4.3. I hope you enjoyed this class. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends about me and have a look at the assessment objective. Make sure now you can discuss the benefits and limitations of sales forecasting. That's it. Bye-bye.